Hello, this is Lee with 82 Gaming 12 here on YouTube channel Sons of Liberty 75. And I do apologize for that sound in the background. It's uh, my window unit, and uh, it's just too blasted hot here in Texas to uh, not have some air so and uh, don't have central heat and air so I don't know I guess if I <clears throat> use maybe like a microphone maybe I have to I'm gonna have to check into that I know that's gonna be uh, quite annoying and so I apologize for that all right uh, so we're here with uh, video 36 if you can believe it 36 of I allow 1807. I think uh, it's also pronounced A, A Lau. And it may be, actually, should be pronounced A Lau. 1807. That's a Texan pronunciation for you. I, I Lau instead of A Lau. This is uh, <clears throat> produced by Sound of Drums. And that's a Switzerland company. This is part of their Battle of Napoleon series. This is volume one. And I know that uh, I am excited about this series. I'm enjoying this game immensely. And hopefully you're enjoying it too. Uh, I know a lot of uh, viewers uh, don't watch the entire video and there's nothing wrong with that. You watch what you want and then you move on. And the key is for you to be able to see how the game's played and to see if, hey, that's something that, uh, you know, I'd like to, I'd like to uh, get involved in that. You know, I'd like to have a copy of that. I think the future volumes are just gonna get better and better. And hopefully this really takes off and there's a lot of support for it. There was uh, on the game found, and I think now that this new volume is out, people have had a chance to play it and so forth, they're gonna expect future volumes, and I'm excited for uh, Uve to uh, really get his company rolling, which this is not uh, their only game. They've got other games. I suggest that you go to uh, soundofdrumsgames.com and check them out. There you have all the links to the different uh, platforms, but uh, they were doing some construction on that website, so hopefully uh, that'll be up where you can look at all the products and so forth. Um, I don't know how ready available this is. I know uh, that a lot of the uh, gaming websites that have gone to that sell games uh, are, of course, out of stock. So, but uh, hopefully you'll be able to find a copy. If you're a Napoleonic tactical player, okay, then you're going to want this game if you don't already have it. So, I've already talked about some of the other videos of uh, what I think really makes this game stand out from others. And, of course, that's going to be what we find over here, okay, on these two charts. The Russian army orders fatigue and uh, activations. And then, you, of course, you have the French Army. Orders, fatigue, and activation. So all of that is really this here is the, the heart of the game. All right, so we were uh, in the 4 o'clock uh, hour. And we had drawn the last activation, which ended up being French. Okay, there are still three 
Oh, well, I already took them out, but I'll, I'll put them back in. There were three Russian activation cubes still in the cup. Well, the rule is if the cup only has one color of cubes, then that's it. You won't have any more activations that, that turn. So you still go ahead and do the activation that was pulled, <clears throat> but, and that really doesn't matter how many you might have eight cubes. Okay, it doesn't matter. They're, they're just lost. So now I, I kind of looked through, tried to decide where Napoleon really needs to use this last activation. And there were several places that I thought, well, you know, I could really be used here. You've got St. Hilaire is only activated once. And he could be used to attack some of these squares uh, and possibly try to capture this uh, battery here. I also thought about Grouchy and his <coughs> second Dragoon division, uh, reg uh, division. And <clears throat> thought about using the cavalry to take this. They could get in the flank. Uh, oh, the unit underneath has to be in, I don't know why he's turned like that. He's got to be in uh, line. So, I, I think, I don't know what. I'm trying to think if he had been in square. Anyways, I probably flipped him wrong way uh, in the last video or something. So that's a possibility. The other is to try to get Grouchy's cavalry regiments out of the way of these dangerous guns here. But <clears throat> really thinking about it, I thought, you know what? I need to come over here and go with Legron. Legron is here underneath Soap. And that's who we're going to activate. Okay. He's going to use uh, some of his forces here, uh, which this is not one of his. It's the 3rd Division of 4th Corps. And they're going to want to really put uh, some pressure on uh, Somnoff's division that, is, that has made its way down here. Uh, close to Eilau. So, what I've got to do here is I want to mark uh, those guys that are not uh, third division. Okay. Uh, that are kind of close there. So, There is a third division way back here, um, right here. Um, I guess it's really easier just to mark. I have been marking like, okay, units that are not third division that are similar in color. Okay, the ones that are not, of course, uh, that are not uh, similar in color, you don't have to worry about. So all of these over here, we know are second division, but I don't know how did this guy get way back here? But that's who I'm gonna activate. So that's gonna be their second activation. I put it over here, third core, third division, fourth core. Yeah, third division, fourth core. <clears throat> Something else that happened in the uh, prior video was this uh, French defense of this little hilltop, crest top, okay. Uh, turn that unit back over. That's Windmill Hill, okay. Even though it's got like a building on there, it's not considered obstructed terrain, okay. But it's a little, a little like a little knoll like that, okay. Now, it is worth, move these guys. It's worth five, you can see it, five fatigue points, army fatigue points. And right now, the Russians have control of it. 
if the French can gain that back, they can take away, they can basically steal five fatigue points from the Russians and they get them. So with the objectives, they go back and forth between the two armies. Okay. Uh, that makes them very valuable, especially, uh, you know, uh, in the latter phases of, uh, of a battle. Just uh, the uh, gaining of a, a, a very valuable objective can or could turn the tables one way or the other. So, you know, there's some very valuable ones uh, besides Alao. Alao is worth 15, okay? Um, there's some behind. <clears throat> behind the Russian lines here, like right here, Oklopin is worth 10, and then way over there, that's worth 10. This one's worth only five. And uh, Smaditin over here is worth five. This one here is not worth anything. So, and of course, uh, this village right here, free hat, free hit, free hot, free hot, is worth 10. So, all right, so let's get started here. Uh, I, there is another, uh, well, is there two? I think there's actually two, yeah. Two regiments here. Uh, However, can't see him, can you? Okay. So this one here has lost uh, all but one strength point, okay? And then the one underneath, it still has three, all right? So basically, I want to switch those, so we'll put the other one on top. And... I can actually bring them because they're within command range. One, two, three, four hexes. Uh, I could have them attack uh, the second division regiment here in Ilau, but of course they'd be attacking. They'd be attacking up a slope, uh, and uh, that of course is not. Uh, Or up a hill, actually, it's, it's a hill, not, I call it a slope. I think uh, it's a hexide slope, but same thing, it's a hill. So, <clears throat> you know, that, uh, that's a plus two for the defender. So you have to have, kind of have to outnumber. Plus that unit is in restricted terrain. So that's a plus two. So now you're looking at a plus four. They're gonna hold and, and you're more than likely gonna lose a uh, strength point. So, all right, let's see about, uh, let's see this unit here is taking four losses. And so they're within one of uh, being sent to the uh, eliminated area. So I don't want to use him. I think what he's gonna do is he's actually going to uh, move over here. Uh, so they have activated once. So they've got a, a minus one to their movement. Okay, so I count that as uh, activated once. Okay, so they've used one, and then there's two, and then three into here. So, and then of course they're in a uh, general order. So, okay, now we want to look at <clears throat> how we want to attack some of these guys. So now I can move up here uh, and get a little closer to what's going on here. So. There we go. All right, 
So here, this unit here is actually, I'm going to have him turn. Okay, like so. And he's going to be attacking that uh, regiment, that Russian regiment in the rear, right there. Okay, and then let's see what we got here. Um, this unit here is going to join this guy. this fight and I'm going to allow Salt to lead that assault and Legrand is going to lead this one and then this unit that's way back here uh, he's out of command so that means he can move to get into command um but uh, I read it as he can move to get into command. Once he's in command range, then he's got to stop. Um, so, one, two, we we'll put him in command. So, that's where he goes. All right, I can move these, uh, remove these blocks here. All right, so let me mark my assaults. Okay, so we've got here. Now this unit here, I don't wanna have him assault because then, oh, you got my hand in the way. This unit here, I don't want him to be involved in the assault because if he does, can't see, can you? All right, here we go. There we go. All right, so <clears throat> this unit here. Okay, this unit in line. If he is involved in this assault, then this artillery right here can fire on him. Okay, that he can give supporting fire. I don't want that. So I'm not assaulting with this unit, just with this stack here. Okay. And we're going to try to take that uh, objective right there. And then we're going to have Legrand. Okay, is going to attack uh, this guy. Okay, and you know I could. I could bring these guys. Let's see if you can see. I'm going to have to back up. Uh, I could bring these guys over, but if I do, they could get fired on. Uh, I guess I could just bring the, the top one over. Gives, give us a little bit more strength. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Um, so, he's going to change to column. Okay, and let's see. I'm going to have to go this way. So, change to column. Plus, this is his second activation. So, that's two movements. Three, four, five, six. Okay. And I really didn't count this one's, but all he was doing was, uh, this guy was just moving here, so it would have been uh, one for second activation, one for the hex, one for moving adjacent to an enemy unit. Same thing with this, so. There wasn't any issue there with not being able to reach due to movement restrictions. 
All right, so uh, now we can go to the defensive fire. And we'll start here with the red firing on the green. All right, so we've got uh, the, the attacker, the assaulting unit in column. Okay, so this unit here is in column. Okay. Uh, they got a strength of two. Firing, uh, defensive fire is plus one. Fire infantry versus infantry in column is plus one. It's minus uh, one for snow. So we've got a plus one. Roll to five, six is not strong enough. Okay. So, let's see here. Um, so then I can just go straight to uh, Salt. Maybe one tactic that I really haven't been using is you can charge uh, an assault a hex more than once. So So I guess maybe I've maybe I've been doing this maybe I've been doing this wrong all this time in the fact that And the fact that maybe maybe you can oh okay no I've been doing it right 
I'm looking at uh, where it talks about assault. So let me just show you that. I was like trying to think about about this, but it says <clears throat> right here under, uh, and I, I just uh, printed off the uh, newest living rules. So, so it says here, units of a division with an attack order may assault after movement of all units of the activated formation is finished. So, but you can move and then you could have, you know, different stacks that are adjacent to a unit attack separately. And that's why you do this procedure here, you know, um, like so. So you, you take care of each assault or charge individually, unless you have, you know, maybe uh, units that are attacking the same uh, hex, then of course you can combine them. But where you don't do the fire to add all of them first, defensive fire first to all of them, and then you can, t you know, you just take care of one at a time, each, each assault separately. So, okay. <clears throat> but, unlike some tactical games, or even other games, hex encounter games, uh, you can attack the, the same hex more than once. You know, you don't have to, you don't have to combine all your, your attack into one. You can, you know, like right here, I could, I could attack with the, the blue and the orange here. I could attack here first, and then I could attack with this one, uh, you know, afterwards. And, uh, basically what you have here is, of course, if this unit has to retreat, uh, they're going to lose a lot of, they're going to lose a lot of strength points because they're surrounded, you know. Okay. <clears throat> All right, let's go to the, uh... <clears throat> excuse me, let's go to the uh... <coughs> actual assault now. Okay, so the defensive fire was ineffective. Okay, and this unit has a strength of six. Okay, now on this hill, it shows some little buildings, but if we look at the, if we look at the uh, meal and farm, Treated as clear. Right here. Mill and farm treat as clear. So that's what we do. That's what we're doing. We're gonna treat it as clear. So and that's what it sounds like right there when the the window unit is not running. Only if that's the way it could be, it'd have to be we I'd have to wait until like late September, early October, maybe. Before that happens. So, all right, so a strength of six, defending. And they are on that heel, so they do get that uh, defense. It would be a, end up being a plus two for the defender because the attacker is going uphill. All right, so the attacker, assaulter, you got salt. Okay. Okay, so the bottom unit has lost two. So that's seven there. Top unit has lost two, so that's five. So we've got a total of 12. So that's going to be a two to one. So we've got two to one. That's a minus one. Okay. The defender is not a lead or green, but they are Russian, so that's a plus one. So we're at zero. Okay. Um, they have an attack order. Okay. And let's see. Everybody's in column. So the only thing we're going to have is we're going to have charging or assaulting uphill. That's a plus two. 
And then we, of course, we have Solt's uh, leadership rating, which is a three. So a minus three. So that means we're gonna end up with a minus one total. So. And we've got a 10 is rolled. Minus one is a nine, which means the Russians hold. No one uh, loses anything. It's just a stare down, I guess. That's what occurs there. All right, and then we move over here. Okay, and so these guys, uh, that's four and two. That's six, okay. But defensive fire, they can fire at this unit here. Okay, so that's the strength of two. Plus one for defensive fire, plus one for the target being infantry in line. I mean, uh, plus one, so now we're at plus two. Minus one for snow, so it's going to be a plus one. Seven plus one is eight. It's not, not high enough to inflict any kind of casualties. So, all right, so we've got a total of six here. Is that right? This unit's lost a lot. Okay, this unit has three. Okay, and then this unit back here, four, so that's five. Uh, that's eight. Eight to six. That's just going to be one to one. Okay. Uh, no one is elite. The uh, defender is Russian, so that's plus one. Uh, they have attack orders. They're charged for more than one hex, minus one, so we're at zero. Okay, charged through or assaulted through the rear, that's uh, minus two. Okay, and then of course, Lagrand adds a minus two, so we're at minus four. Roll to six becomes a two, and of course, they've got to uh, lose a strength point and retreat. Now, where are they going to retreat to? That's the question. They don't, they don't have anywhere that they can go. All right, so flip this over to six. Okay. So, well, of course they can, well, individually, they can go right through there. Okay, uh, right through this guy. Um, they, they, Really, the attack came from here and here, so they couldn't go there, couldn't go there. They'd have to go here. This unit here, of course, is going to... Uh, and, of course, they'd have to go separately, one at a time. So the bottom guy would go, which means he loses one. Okay. And he's got to retreat a total of six. The top guy is going to be destroyed. He's only got one left. So he's gone, which means the Russians lose a gray fatigue marker. All right. So this is where he was at. One, two. Um, So one, two, three, four. Uh, yeah, one, two. I hope he would retreat back this way. Three. Uh, we can go. One, two, three, four, five. What do we got here? We just push these guys back some. 
so I guess that's one way to do it. Okay, and then of course they can move in. And I'm gonna move. No, they can both move in. They can move in together. And so that's what they're going to do. Well, he would actually have to uh, turn. So he would be facing the same way they're they, they're gonna face, which they can they can adjust their uh, so they they can all turn like that. Okay. And so there we go. All right. So that means that's the end of the four o'clock turn. And now I have to go through and uh, take care of the other steps. And we got to take care of the uh, formations under hold, regroup, and retire because they get to gain strength points back. Okay, so if they're under regroup, each unit of division may regain one strength point. Uh, if they're under hold, two units of the division and if they're under, let's see, what is it? Retire, one unit can recover a strength point. So hold is two, regroup is all, and retire is one. Okay, so let's go through there and do that. All right, let's do the, the Russian army first. So, 8th Division has a hold. Okay, now 8th Division hasn't suffered any casualties. Okay, 8th Division is Essen. is right here. Um, they haven't suffered any casualties yet. So, of course, they can't regain. All right, the next one is the 3rd Division. Okay, and that is Sacken. Okay, so two, he's under hold. So two of his, two of his uh, uh, units, uh, he's got this unit here, can't. Uh, this is third. Okay. Uh, it's only one. Okay, now let's see what... Uh, what these guys have. Okay, so this guy is going to recover one. What's this guy on the bottom? You guys all in line? Yep. Okay. Okay. So they recovered one, and then uh, I guess it'll be... Uh, Where's the other one? That's second division. This one here, I can't, I'm not doing him. This one here. Okay. All right. Okay, so that takes care of third division. They can't, they can't uh, take away all of their losses. 
I've got to retain at least one. Okay, so third division, uh, defend. Okay, Bagovat, Bagovat is in hold. And so is the left wing reserve cavalry. So Baggy, we move over here. It's kind of like all over the place. Okay. So this unit here though is adjacent to units, but this unit here is not. Okay, so let's recover some of those Lancers. Hushers. All right. So that takes care of Baggy. All right. And then the left wing, okay, which would be uh, Von Pollen right here. Um, so we've got these Curseers. Let's take one from him. Dragoons. Let's see what this guy's got. Well, I guess that's it. Okay. And then seventh division has hold. Okay, where is seventh at? Seventh division. Where is seventh division? Oh, okay, that's uh. Doktorov. Uh, Doktorov doesn't have, I don't think he's suffered any losses. Okay. He's, uh, he's right there. Right here. And uh, he hasn't suffered any losses. Let's see, I don't think this one's his. No. That's third division, but uh, if they're in uh, adjacent to an enemy unit, I'm not uh, allowing them to, uh, to do... Uh, to do that now what about this one here oh here we go let's see what he's got oh he's only got one see i can't take away this one's one because uh you can't uh have them recover all the way to full strength so all right so that takes care of the russians now we look at the french okay so we got the guard withhold the first dragoons withhold okay so let's start with the guard. And I also do it where, okay, they've got to be like within command range. Um, and uh, I think it's, right now they don't have, you know, uh, anyone that, that fits that. Um, but I mean, I guess you don't, you could say, well, not necessarily. They could, no matter where they're at, you know, they've got their own officers. They wouldn't need the, the, uh, division leader to rally them. But I don't think, yeah, they don't have any that, uh, maybe this one. No. So they don't have any that, that need to, that can recover. All right, so we go to the first Dragoons. Now, I know we do with them, but uh, <clears throat> I think the first first Dragoons, which would be uh, Klein, see, they're adjacent to enemy units. Uh, this unit here, 
okay um probably the one sitting here well he's only got one what is he what is he lacking yeah all right so none of the first dragoons can recover any so then we move to the second cuirassiers okay and they're got they have regrouped that was almost a disaster so that's gonna be uh de Halpool, okay which means all of his units can recover uh one strength okay so <clears throat> all right so he goes to two this one here goes to three This one here goes to two. And I don't know, is that all that he's got left? I guess so, I guess he's got three regiments and one battery of guns. So. Yeah, he lost uh, a regiment. Okay, so th that they're taken care of. All right, and then we go to uh, 2nd Division, 4th Corps. Has retire. Okay, which means one unit. Uh, can regain. So that's going to be Lavelle here. One unit can regain. Guess I'll do this one. All right. They need to go to regroup. That's what they need to go to. Uh, defend, hold. Okay, First Division, Third Corps has hold, okay. Uh, so that's gonna be uh, Moran. Okay. So he has hold, so that means two of his can uh, regain. What's this one got? Okay. Uh, I don't, I'm pretty sure. I don't know if it can be artillery or not. Let's see. Let's see what it says here on the on the uh, recovery. Oh, of course, the artillery can't regain just it can't be regain back to full strength. So. So that answers that. But the unit that's underneath can regain. <clears throat> and one more. He's got another one out here. Oh. Uh, see this unit here. Yeah, that's part of his. Okay. Those guys need to get to the attack. Uh, <clears throat> all right. All right, so that takes care of uh, all of the uh, recovery. All right, so <clears throat> next thing I have to do is I have to go through here and uh, I have to <clears throat> turn all of the cavalry over 
and of course then move the turn marker, <clears throat> advance it, so we're being the five o'clock hour, and there's only seven hours total. So then we start the process with the weather. Um, then we have, of course, the uh, any of the uh, changes to orders and so forth, which I guess, you know, we could do this. Okay, so basically what I do is I just pull this back uh, and then I just start flipping over, you know, the, the cavalry. So uh, flip these guys back over to their... Uh, these guys, of course, have already been flipped. They didn't do anything. Uh, so this guy, of course, was forced to retreat. So flip him back. All right, here. Let's see if there's any that need to be flipped. Okay. Nope, none of them. Okay. Uh, I'm pretty sure that there's gonna be, there's gonna be some. Let's see, what did Mill, what did the third division have? Oh, they had, they had retire, no. Yeah, they had retire. I guess I flipped, did I? I don't know, did I? I don't think I affected, did anything for them, did I? They should have been able to turn, uh, turn somebody over. This one's too far away. This guy's not. This guy over here's not. All right, let's flip him over. And then what about these guys? I don't think I got those guys either. Well, the second division has defend orders, but the third, let's see, the first division has regroup. So I know I didn't do anything with them. All right, so, so that's one I missed right here is uh, De Hardin's guys, they're, they're still in regroup. So that means each of them can recover one okay up to one which means now they're ready to to uh, get back into the fray all right all right, so, okay, now I still need to flip over the uh, the rest of the uh, cavalry. So I look over here, and of course, I've got lots of cavalry over here that need to be flipped. This one, this one, both of these. Let's see. No, well, it should have been. Oh, he was, okay.
already flipped. All right, now I just need to look over this to make sure that everybody is taken care of. right there uh, so that takes care of everybody all right so some of this back on here helps to hold that down so now what we do is we come over here and uh, I need to remove all of these activation cubes. I take these two and put them in the cup for the next turn. Okay. All right, so that part is done. Okay, um, let's see if there's something else I need to do here. So now we're ready for the weather phase of of the next turn. So the turn is there, five, five, okay. And now the weather was snow. I think I'd rolled like a four, but all we do is we just roll one die. I rolled a three. So that means we're gonna be in clear right here. So I can remove the, the snow reminder. And uh, we've got clear. Now, of course, I move these because they, they uh, just end up getting knocked around, end up on the floor. Same thing with this, uh, this here. Uh, it should have one of these possession markers uh, but uh, I know it's French, and I keep hitting it, and it ends up on the floor. So, all right, so we've got clear. That means uh, there's no uh, snow effect, line of sight, or to fire combat, or to uh, reducing command points, or remove, reducing uh, army uh, activations. So, all right, so the next thing we do is uh, we can move our army commander and corps commanders. And so this is where you have to decide uh, what you're gonna do. The, the, the Russians have no new reinforcements, okay? They've got to go with what they've got. And so, <clears throat> Bennington is going to have four command points to use, which means he's able to change four orders without a die roll. They just get changed. So that has to be uh, looked at. The other thing is the reinforcements. Okay. Who's coming in? Five o'clock? Who's coming in? Well... Five o'clock. You're going to have first and second division of six core with uh, Nate. So that's seventeen units.
So there's going to be uh, Marchand with six units and uh, Verdun or Gardin, Verdun or Gardenay, Gardenay maybe with 11 units and then Ney. Via the road from the north map edge that leads through Altop. So he comes in at that that at that hour. Strategic move. So actually, Ney's corps won't be able to do anything offensively until the 6th and 7th hours. So, what we have to do, so the, the Russians, this is what we're looking at, we're looking at the Russians right now, the Russians try to figure out, okay, what are we going to do? Well, of course, the Markov has to get over there where he can delay. He's got to try to get over there to delay Ney's approach. And this is where, okay, if they can block that road, okay, with that five hex rule, then that would force Ney not to be able to come in until six... And he'd have to come in if he can if he changed his order uh, to attack attack order. Then he could come in and and start attacking. Um, but of course, you know, with that five X rule, is strategic move. That means he's got to stop out far enough away from the enemy where he can then. Um, get into formation for attack. So that's what the Russians need to do there. That keeps Ney off where he won't be a factor. Okay, uh, uh, at all before the uh, it gets too dark. Okay. Um, and the battle is called. So Something else is uh, the stock is going to have to uh, somehow pull back some cavalry to take care of uh, of, of helping uh, defend uh, either the stock or Korf. Now Korf's got some cavalry back here that he could bring over here uh, because the stock is kind of tied up. He's got one unit here. No, they're all tied up. So. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, so Lestock is going to have to keep his attack order. Um, Markov keeps his order. Fifth Division. Um, I guess I could. They could go to. They could go to hold. I think he's lost so many people. Fifth Division here has lost too many guys. Okay. Um, we're talking about here is right here. Kushkov. Okay. He's lost all these guys back here. Um, well, maybe not so much. Maybe they're not as bad as I thought. Maybe these guys. 
This is fifth division. Oh, that's what I'm looking at. Okay, fifth division. That guy's lost five. Two. Okay. Okay, well. I guess I could keep them attacking. Reserve cavalry needs to attack. I'm trying to think where I can just um, stop stop attacking it. Um, I've got to conserve army fatigue. So, let's go back here. All right, over here on the Russian left, uh, Golitzine. I could put him into hold. Uh, of course, I'm gonna have to try to get Bennington over there as close as I can. Put him in hold, put Kaminsky in hold. Um, and some of these others that are in defend, put them in hold. Like even if I put the the artillery uh, in hold, they can still fire, but that would be saving army fatigue. So, but Bennington's got to be close enough to do that. So he's actually got two right there. Uh, I might just have to roll for some of these up here. Uh, Von Paulin, I want to change him to attack, I think. Yeah, he's on hold right here. I want to change him to attack. So let me put these, uh, I need to be putting these markers out so I know what, uh, what I'm wanting to do. So, all right, so with, uh, I want to attack here. I want to put a hold here. Put a hold on him and, uh, We want to put a hold over there. Okay. I want uh, Baggy is in hold. Okay. I want Essen to attack. He hasn't done anything. Okay. So we want to put him in an attack. Okay. Um, second. That's third division. They're in hold. Center artillery, I want to put them in hold. So that would be these guys. I want to put them in hold. And the right wing, the left wing is destroyed. Okay. Um, and so, let's see, he has a tag. Um, I think that there will take care of it. So, what I need is I need Bennington 
okay, to be in an area where he can, he can, uh, I've got hold there that I need to change, a hold there, that's two. Here's three and then four right there. So those are the four he needs to go to. And then these, well, if I do that, then that means these, these artilleries can't change. They don't get to roll. So, okay, well, he's gonna have to put himself in a position where he can be in this center area. Okay, and I just count where, how far he can, if he can be like somewhere close to here. So we've got one, let's see. Okay, so here's, here's one here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we put we can put him here. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. He can easily go there. Okay, so I know he can get to these guys here. One, two, three. Let's see. Okay, so we go uh one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, he reached this one. So that's these two, this one, and then that one. And that means those two on down there are just gonna have to roll. Okay. So I moved Bennington. Okay. So I just wanna make sure. So it hold. Units may fire uh, in the simultaneous fire phase. At the end of the activation segment, two units of the base may regain. Okay. All right. So that's exactly what we want to do. All right. So, okay, the right wing artillery. They probably should have been in hold to start with. Uh, right wing artillery is going to uh, hold. Okay. And then the center artillery is going to hold. Like I said, this is going to save uh, fatigue points. It's not changing anything about strategic, I mean, uh, activate uh, initiative. All right, and then uh, the other thing we have is uh, we have Essen is going to go to the attack. So that's eight division. They haven't done anything. They were in a hold. Now they're going to be an attack. Okay. And uh, Van Paulen here. Is going to the attack. That's the left wing cavalry reserve. Okay. All right, so that's four. All right, so now I have to roll for these other guys. All right, so for Kaminsky, I've got to roll a seven or less. I rolled a 12. All right, so he doesn't change. I think he was already, let's see, what was he? Yeah, he was attacking. So he has to stay. And then now we go to uh, Gulitzine. Okay, right here. Same thing, seven or less. Okay, got a four. So he actually goes to hold. Uh, that's the center cavalry. All right. Okay, and I didn't want to change anybody else. Well, let's see here. What is, uh, okay, the Prussians are attacking. Uh, 14th, okay, 4th Division. Well, the 4th Division. I don't 
don't see how they're going to be doing much attacking. They need to try to retire. That's uh, some off. Oops. So that's some off. He needs to retire. I got a nine, so no, he can't. Okay, and uh, let's see who else. Uh, Tushka. Oh, uh, what's what's Tolstoy doing? Uh, two. Second division. They need to try to go to hold. Okay, right here. I want to try to put him into hold. Right here, eight or less. Six, okay, so they can go to hold. So, um, second division. Okay, and then let's see. Let's see, that quarter off. like he is for now. All right. So they're finished. Okay. Uh, and we'll count up uh, all their stuff here in a little bit. Uh, next we have the uh, the French. Okay. So of course they have, they have to give um, orders to both of Ney's uh, divisions. And we want to change the saw to attack. So we want to. He's going to have to roll. But he's got a nine, so uh, he, he should have a pretty easy time uh, rolling for a nine. So that's what we have there. Um, Get a view from, from back this other way. All right, so here's the saw, and they will be coming in right behind me. So I've got to give two strategic move orders there for both of those divisions. If I if I want to try to bring them both in. in the second division so I'd have to give them a strategic move so I put that on the second division Messiers had the guard. They have a hold. I think I'm going to keep that. Um, um, 
Oh, Seth here though, he has an attack order, so I'm gonna keep his attack order. Legrand has an attack order. He just doesn't have that much to work with, though. So let's try to change him to defend. Or even just hold. So we want to change him to hold. Lavelle here. I want to see, uh, is he a retire? Yeah. We want to go with regroup. Try to go to regroup here with him. So, I want to move Salt back. So I'm able to move him back with uh, Lavelle so they can get that regroup going. Okay. Um, so then with The uh, first division of Seventh Corps, Dehardin. I want to go with an attack, so we want to get his guys back in. Okay, so this is an attack here with his guys. Uh, he still needs to regroup his. Uh, Uguru. I guess he had went, let's see. Padele. Okay, Uger, Uguru's the division general. So, or the core, I'm sorry, core, not division. That's Adele. So the second. Yeah, second division. He was in defend. So he's not actually getting anything back. Um, let's put them into attack. So we want to change them. I think. No hard. We want to go with. Uh, let's see what we got here. Third division. Oops. But excuse me. Well, I guess he could just go to hold. What is he in? Third division, retire. Yeah, so we want to change him to hold. Okay. Um, climb, first, first division. This guy's lost three. I think he has hold. I we want to go to attack with him. So, I want to go to attack with him. St. Hilaire is still in the attack. Um, 
where she is still in the attack. Uh, we want to attack with uh, Moran here. Okay. So that is first division. They're in a hold. Let's put them on the attack. Okay. We'll put them on, on the attack. And then, of course, over here where Davu's at, uh, we want to put Preant in defense. And uh, Goudin, he also wanted to be in defense. Or I guess he could be in hold. That would save. Save some. So, he's got a nine, he's got a nine. Got a nine over here. Davu, uh, I guess we'll, let's have a feel this way. So, Davu right here, um, hope that helps, was here. And uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So he's going to move over here with uh, um, Moran so he can help him change his order to attack. All right. So Napoleon has six possible. Command changes, okay, and he's right here. So we've got, let's see, if he doesn't move from where he's at, which I think he really would need to move back some, but um, so he can change one, two, three. Four. Okay. Uh, and then five, six, probably by changing uh, this one. So let's see. Uh, one, two, let's see. All right. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So yeah, fourteen. And up here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So, <clears throat> so you could actually move to there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So he's safe there. He can change this one. So that's one, two, three, four. Okay, and then. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So he can then change that one. So, okay, so here uh, we're going to change Legrand's uh, attack order to hold. So he goes to hold. Okay. Um, here we've got uh, Dayardine, the first division of Seventh Corps, goes to attack. Okay, he was in regroup. Okay, so that's two. Uh, actually, three because it took two to, to activate this one. One, two, because it's uh, thirteen to eighteen away from Napoleon, Texas. All right, so right here, Argaru is right beside uh, Napoleon. Okay, he goes to attack. That's second division of Seventh Corps. Actually, I've got a Russian one in there for some reason. All right, so that's uh, three. Okay, we've got uh, Nilhad 
Okay, let's turn this a little bit. So Milhad back here is going to hold. That's a third Dragoon Division. They had been in retire. Okay. And then he's also able to change Klein's uh, first Dragoons back to attack. They had been in hold. All right. Now, we've got a roll on the other ones. That was one, two, three, four, five, six. So now, uh, okay, so looking uh, here, we've got Salt and Lavelle, we wanna go to regroup. So we'll roll with uh, Salt first, he has a nine. I rolled a three. Okay, so they can change to uh, regroup. And that's second division. Okay, so they were able to change. Um, oh, of course, then we want to go to uh, the Saul. He's got a nine. See if he can get out of this strategic order. Rolled a five, so they go to the attack. All right. Okay, then uh, we have, uh, <coughs> let's see, who else? All right, let's turn that back on and we'll just come over here. And then we can take care of these other two. All right, so here we've got uh, Devu, who's got a 10. Roll him first. We've got a six, so they get to change to uh, attack, and that's uh, Devu's first division. The third core. Okay, <clears throat> and then the others have to, they have to roll, okay. So we've got uh, Goudin here, okay, he's got a nine, nine or less, okay, I rolled a four. So they can go to hold. So that's sec, let's see, Goudin is, he's third. Third division of third core. And lastly, we have Friant. He has a nine, but I rolled uh, an 11, so he can't change. They're still going to be attacking with the tackle. All right. <clears throat> Let me make sure I got it, everybody. And for those that might be new, these are these are not part of the game. They're there, they're just heavy metal dice to help hold down my plexiglass that uh, <clears throat> I placed that uh, I wish I had, uh, had two pieces put down instead of just one. And I probably should have laid it lengthwise uh, instead of, but then probably I wouldn't have been able to uh, vice it to the table. So, you know, uh, it's wider, it's wider than the table or, well, wider, yeah, wider than the table, so. All right, so the last thing we have to do is we have to figure out the army fatigue points that each army has now lost because of the orders. So let me set this down a second and I'll turn this light over here and see what kind of damage we got. All right, for the Russians. 
Okay, we're looking at the number that's on the right. It's a blue, it's a blue number. Okay, and so we can start here. Okay, so we've got two, minus two, minus two, that's four, minus two more is six, that's minus eight. Oops. Minus 10, minus 12, minus 14, minus 16. All right, so we take a look here, okay. These are worth 10 each, so I take two of these and give four gray ones back, which means the Russians are in a world of hurt here because they've only got 28 left. Okay. All right, let me take a look at the French. Okay. Okay, if we go over here, okay. And that's where I'm not, I'm not bringing in the first division. Okay, so we've got minus two, minus one more is three. That's five, minus seven, minus nine, minus 11. Okay, that's plus one, so we're at 10. Here's 12, minus 14, plus one, so we're at minus 13. Uh, minus 15, minus 17. Okay, so that's nine, so we can actually just take, uh, oh no, 17. We've got to take one of these and then seven of, seven of these. That's six, seven. Okay. So, Thirty-five. French have thirty-five. The Russians have twenty-eight. So there's a seven, seven point difference. Okay, now we look at the activation. Okay, that's going to be the number on the left. It's the red number, usually positive. All right, so we've got uh, four and four is eight. Uh, there's uh, twelve. 16, 20, sorry, 20, uh, 24, 28, is that right? Let me count this again. Okay, so we've got four and four, that's eight, 12, 16, that's 20, 24, 28, 32. All right, so they've got 32. All right, the French. Okay, we've got four and four is eight. 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 33, 37. So the French will have the first activation. Okay. So, Now we have to we have to determine what the uh, activation cubes will look like. All right. So we know it's clear. Okay. We look at the turn track. Okay. This is where we're at. It says five F four Russian. So the French get five activations. The Russians get four. And uh, you may say, well, why is it getting smaller as we go around? Okay, and actually three and two. It's because of the time, okay? It's getting darker and darker, which means you've got less light, which means you're gonna have less activations. So, all right, so five for the French, okay? Four for the Russians. Now, for the French, we take a look at uh, Napoleon's counter and the purple circle with the white number is a four. So we take that four and add it to the five. So that's nine. And then we roll a die. Actually, I rolled one, one of each color. So four and six. So we take 
four and add it to the nine, so that's 13. So we're gonna take uh, 13 of these cubes, okay, and add it to the cup here that has two fire cubes, okay? So we're looking for 13 blue, okay? So there's three. Three more, that's uh, six. Three more is nine. Okay. Three more is 12. And then one for the activation that will come first. We'll put it here by Napoleon. All right, now for the, uh, the uh, Russians. Okay, so we know here they get four. Okay, and then we take a look at Benningson. Okay, and we see that he has a leadership rating of a two. Okay, so we take that two and add it to the four and we get six. Okay, and we come over and look at the die we rolled, which is, it's the coat of arms. Okay, which is the six. So they get 12. So, uh, it's gotta be pretty even, except the fact that the French get the first activation. So there's three. Three more is six. There's nine. There's their there's their twelve. Okay, so um, I guess something else you could always look at is the uh, strength that's been lost. Which I can reorder I can organize this and put it in the in the next video. Uh, I just want to organize the losses here. Uh, probably have to put them well I can put them here and so forth. But as you can see, okay big stack here, smaller stack there. So so the Russians have definitely lost uh, more men and artillery. Uh, we have a whole, a complete division of, of artillery that has been wiped out. Uh, it was the Russian left, left wing reserve It's these ones right here. Uh, so I'll, I'll organize that. I want to ba basically uh, add up the losses and compare it to the historical losses. And of course, we will be comparing the total losses, not just the wounded or the, the killed, wounded, uh, captured, and missing. Okay, we're not, we're not going to take just part of that. We're going to just take the total because I, we don't know, you know, how, how many of these were, were killed, wounded, missing, captured, so forth. Okay, we just know that they're, they're casualties. And I wanna just do a comparison to see, because uh, the play itself has been very uh, uh, historic in nature, you know, except for the fact, of course, that, you know, I didn't do the mass cavalry charge, uh, I got the cavalry uh, engaged early on individually um, and uh, you know the Russians really haven't had any major uh, breach of the lines okay uh, the closest that they came that, that they came to uh, anything was you know just recently I mean, uh, with uh, with Somnov, Somnov, not Somnov, but so Somnov, maybe. But uh, and of course we did have uh, Tolstoy got one uh, regiment into Ilau, but uh, that's not enough to to take possession of it. So, 
and with the, the amount of turns we have left, uh, I think both armies are going to have to just uh, basically go into hold just to keep from losing their army to take from orders. Of course, you know, they'd have to roll. They're going to have to roll to change some of these orders. And, uh, you know, the Russians just spent 11, uh, I mean 11, 17. Was it 17? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Okay, so sixteen. Yeah, sixteen. And I guess the French spent one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Uh, they got plus one, so that's ten. 12, 14, plus 1, back to 13, 15, 17. Okay, so they, they, they were equal, but of course, um, the French had more to start with. So, very interesting. This is this would just be like I've said before. This is this would be a fascinating experience. Let me put this now. These are not part of the game. Okay, these little bitty cubes. Okay, uh, there's a difference between the cube, these little cubes, and these big cubes. Okay, so the the big ones are part of the game. Okay, these little ones I'm just using to. Uh, identify where the army commanders are at. It makes makes it easier for me to be able to spot them. Okay, uh, just like I use these other little cubes here, and uh, I put that uh, link. It's just an eBay uh, account that the guy sells those cubes. Guy it might be a gal, someone. I don't know them. I've just bought stuff from them before and been pleased with what I've purchased. So I was just giving you a, the option of, hey, if, if you want to use something, you know, you want to know where I get got my cubes. I actually got the ones that I'm using actually from Michael's, but I've, I've got some that are exactly like these uh, for uh, a project that I'm working on. So, but Uh, the other thing that uh, I did different than uh, Bennington was, uh, or Lestoc, uh, historically Lestoc uh, traversed around to the Russian left and helped to secure the Russian left flank against Davout. Okay. Uh, I had sent Golitzin over there and Kaminsky to engage Davu. And that allowed the Prussians just to come straight down this road and put pressure on Napoleon's left, which caused uh, Bessieres to be ordered over to defend the flank. So, um, you know, the Russians if they could push through these guards, but I don't think they can because, of course, you know, the guards get that added bonus because they are all elite. Every one of them are, are elite units. And the Prussians don't have any elite units. They do have that heavy cuirassier regiment, but that's not enough. And, of course, uh, Korv, he doesn't have any... Uh, well, he does have uh, that cuirassier there. And I don't know, he should be, why does he not turned over? See, there's one I missed. There. All right. So, he should be fresh. Um, something I've learned is, uh, of course, you've got to stack your artillery. They're not going to be effective individually, you know, stacked with, uh, say, an infantry unit. 
um, if if their strength is only two. You only have two batteries, okay, which is like I don't know, four to six guns, I guess. You're you're just not going to be effective enough. You've got to have them stacked. So these uh, Russian guns, of course, they are they're devastating. That's one reason uh, Dehardines here had to fall back and regroup for several hours to regain some of his uh, units because they were they were blasted to bits. So, and you know that that uh, you know uh, is uh, uh, what happened historically. Uh, I think he was uh, Ugaru's, one of his divisions. I don't know if it was uh, Dehardines or, or could have even been uh, St. Hilaire. I'm trying to think. No, I think it was Ugaru. Anyways, they uh, stumbled over there in a, a snowstorm, which I haven't had. Didn't have, haven't had a snowstorm yet. It's all just been snow and clear. But uh, they stumbled and, and come right into the to in front of the artillery and got blasted. And uh, that's already happened. We've had, uh, uh, of course, the uh, second uh, Curacier division under Dale Poole attempted to charge the artillery and uh, found out, uh, yeah, that's a not a very bright idea there, Dale Poole. You just lost a lot of your horses and men. So I'm seeing a very historical uh, result here, uh, where we're, we're grinding into the last few hours of daylight, and no one really has an advantage, okay, beyond a little bit in the army fatigue. Uh, maybe. I really should have used uh, Essen and his 8th eighth, eighth Division to uh, try to take Al out, you know. Um, one thing was, you know, I, the way I grouped these artillery, the way that I placed them, um, one of the rules is they have to, they have to be a, a you know, adjacent to another unit, but the, all of them don't have to be adjacent. See, I could have like shifted this over and left a gap, okay, between like these two and these two, okay. Which, if you have them stacked, I guess that would be, you know, you're you're adjacent. I mean, uh, you you are, but you're not, you know, kind of. But see, the way that I put them in here, I've blocked that all off. Can't get through there. So I should have I should have provided uh, some space. See, I'd have to get get rid of some guys here, move some guys here, so that I can get to the Eighth Division to come through here and get down here to Ilau. You know, he's got a he's got a pretty big uh, division, and uh, I don't know that I really have the time to have him have him turn around and and come down through here. I got. Uh, Doctor off there, seventh division. What is he just sitting? Let's see what he's doing. I don't think he's doing anything. Yeah, he's got a hold, which means he's not going to move. So, you know, kind of, uh, kind of by mistake, uh, I, uh, which I guess they can go over these uh, squares because they're not at full strength. They're just a small square. Barely enough there to form a square. He could come back, he could come down through there, but it would take him time. You know, this is 15. Here at the end, 15. Uh, that's a big turnaround. 
because that means there's 15 fatigue points. It's basically what happens is you've got a, uh, like a momentum. It's a momentum thing. You know, your troops get a lot, uh, elated that, hey, we've just taken, a, you know, aisle out. And so, you know, it kind of like gives them some adrenaline. That's the, that's the, uh, the reaction you're getting. And so you have one army that's getting drained and the other one's getting lifted up because, hey, we just took aisle out. You know, and so that's the turn where you have fatigue points. You know, an army that's kind of like on the brink of just saying that we've had enough, all of a sudden they capture an important part of the battlefield and it spreads through the army. So that's that's what you're getting with these fatigue points when they're transferred from one army to the other. Okay, uh, with the orders, that's just the flat. Um, expulsion of energy to get that order performed to carry out you know you've got exhausted troops already and they're 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 still being pushed in there to fight see and so they're just it's just grinding on them so like i said before there's so much chrome that's built into this game, into the system. And it's this right here, like I've said over and over, this is the, this is what makes this game, okay? This right here and all that it controls. And not only controls, but affects. Uh, and it, it, it not only, it, it's, it doesn't control absolutely. It also creates chaos. So there's a controlling factor and a chaos factor involved in this these charts okay um so the next video i'll pick up with the five o'clock turn we uh that's 1700 uh we've got everything organized we know the weather's clear we know who has the initiative and we know how many activation cubes are in the cup. They're exactly 12 and 12 and two red, which makes this a very even turn, okay, in activation cubes. Now, does that mean that the, the cube will be, be pulled out of, the cu out of the cup evenly? No, that's the chaos. You know, we don't know what's going to happen who's who's going to get you know the next turn and the turn after the turn after that or we don't know when those fire cubes are going to be drawn you know we don't know if uh may is going to be able to march on to the battle or if he's going to be stopped by markov over here by altov now, if he can get his activation first, well, actually it's going to be the French, but if he's able to activate early and he can get over here, he can cut him off. So, I guess that could push him, push him that direction. Maybe they don't want to get him pushed over there because then they could get that objective right there. Smod didn't. Smod didn't. Smod didn't. Anyways. All right, so that's where we're at. At the end of this video. And I'm having a... A thrilling time here uh, with this with this battle this is a battle that uh, I don't know that uh, I'm trying to think uh, I don't think I've ever gained it I think this may be the first time personally I'm more more uh, more into the peninsular peninsular war 
with uh, Spain and Portugal and uh, the uh, French against the British and the, and the Spanish uh, and the guerrillas. And there's not a whole lot of uh, games that that uh, cover that either. Um, Viva la Emperor. Didier Rory has uh, uh, has that uh, uh, volume of four battle the four battles in uh, in Spain. Uh, so that's nice to to have to play. And of course, I'm hoping that he'll come out with uh, some more. I think he's he's going with uh, his, the next one that uh, is uh, that's with Legion War Games uh, is uh, Fagram. So I guess it's in production. But there's so many. Puentes de Oro, Oro um, what else? Oh, there's so many over in uh, Spain, battles that took place in Spain, that uh, I think would be, some of them could be smaller, okay, smaller engagements, uh, where you could possibly have a couple of, a couple of battles in one volume. Of course, Talavera would be a really good one to do, which uh, the uh, gamers uh, did that with uh, Vimiero. And uh, I enjoyed playing those. So there's not, not really a, a lot tactical-wise. Okay, tactical-wise, there's not a lot of the... Uh, Peninsula War battles covered in in uh, in the gaming industry, and I don't know if it's just because of, of there's not that much interest from gamers, and gamers are more interested in the European. It's, you know, that's still European, but. It's, uh, it was considered the peninsula, peninsula or peninsula war, so. I've done a lot of reading on, on those. And, uh, Napoleon didn't, he didn't take that, uh, that very seriously. That and the fact that he put his, uh, brother, Joseph, Joseph, uh, on the throne there, that uh, that didn't make the uh, Spanish people very happy with uh, losing their rural family and and uh, uh, the people there did not react the way that uh, the uh, European nations did when they were uh, conquered. Okay, um, they fought back. They did all kinds of horrible things when they captured the French, but of course the French were raping and killing and doing horrible things to them, and they'd had enough. So they attacked back with guerrilla forces. And so, uh, and the terrain was just... horrendous for movement and the ability to uh, gather supplies just around where you're at. Um, a, lot, a lot of the soldiers that went there died from starvation, from the uh, from the elements. And uh, of course Wellington, which uh, for part of that was he was well, well asleep. So he uh, he used the environment to his advantage. 
uh, pulling back, pulling his forces back behind fortifications and just letting the, uh, the French uh, slowly thin out from hunger and depredation and disease and so forth. So there's even some good uh, opportunities for some games on sieges. You know, several sieges there in the peninsula. Peninsula. So, but I guess there's just not that big of a, that much of an interest, I guess. Uh, but I always hope, you know, that uh, there'd be some more some of those battles that uh, you don't really see that that often. Uh, some smaller companies, I guess, have taken it on, but uh, you know, I want to, I want some, you know, good quality chrome-filled games, you know, uh, that that like this one and like what the gamers had, of course, the the command. Uh, order system was uh, atrocious, I guess, for some people. I, I I dealt with it. Just you know the difficulty of you know comp, uh, you know your your, uh, your the orders failing or being changed um, due to poor leaders. But uh, you know the leadership there. Uh, was uh, was not very good, especially with the, the Spanish. So, but there's some good, there's some really good battles that uh, that uh, could uh, be gained, uh, in my opinion. But uh, enough of that. Let's uh, stop this video. Uh, so we're, there's where we're at. Um, Twenty eight fatigue points for the Russian army and. 35 for the French. Things are going to get very interesting in these last few hours. I don't the there's just no way that the French, I mean the uh, Russians nor the French, but the Russians can sustain these attacks. And uh So, you know, they're going to have to eliminate, you know, pretty much all of their attacks except for, you know, three or four with the number of, uh, actually, they're going to have to reduce them down to like two or three um, just because they don't have enough fatigue. That or, or recap, they're going to have to capture some French objectives and, uh, Let's see, what do we got over here? Uh, I don't think this one here actually has, yeah, this one here is not even, doesn't have any, yeah, doesn't have any objective points. This one. So, uh, now this one had, what, five, ten? This one had ten. And they were able to recapture it. Um, Davu was, he captured that right here. Molinkum. <clears throat> Melonakim. That was worth 10. <clears throat> So, I don't know that I see anywhere that they're going to be able to uh, <clears throat> maybe take this one here, Sarah Pollen maybe, um, using Essen, but that's only five. Then you're going to have to try to capture some more, like maybe these back here, these two here, that's, that's another ten. Um, of course, the cemetery here is worth five, but I lost the prize, and <clears throat> you know I got these guns set up where they're blocking approach to I allow. So 
my Russian strategy was not uh, well laid out. I think uh, I'll uh, come back later after some time, after maybe some other videos and just do the, maybe the, uh, the scenario of the battle for Alau uh, on the first day and kind of really try to improve my, my uh, attacks with a division instead of just haphazardly throwing them in there and expecting some good results but trying to use some Napoleonic tactics and using a division the way it should be used. So I think I'll come back to do, and do that and see if that, uh, if I can uh, succeed in capturing territory. Now, I, I did some capturing, but it was not really, it was just, it wasn't well, it wasn't well planned out, I'll put it that way. So, I've just been kind of throwing forces against each other, throwing counters out there. Not really much of a plan. You've got to use your, your uh, artillery, your infantry, and your artillery uh, together, setting, setting one sets up the other. And uh, kind of did that. I did that with my cavalry here, but I haven't attacked him. I mean, I, I caused him to go to square, but I haven't got the, my artillery up there to blast him or get my infantry up there from the French pers pers perspective. So, and I really thought Davu was going to be able to turn the Russian left, but when Kaminsky and Golitzin showed up, Man, that put a stop to Davu. So, all right, come on back, see what happens. Highlight 1807, sound of drums. We develop and publish thrilling board games. And go check them out at soundofdrumsgames.com. And then uh, don't forget to check out Chessex make more than just dice they've got uh, some table tabletop accessories and a few games chessex.com this is 82 gaming 12 here on youtube sons of liberty 75 appreciate uh, your support uh, appreciate uh, those that throw out comments you know i'm not not asking for for likes and all that other business. I'm not doing this for for any kind of uh, payment or anything. I'm just doing it uh, to uh, help other gamers, other grownards in uh, seeing how games are played and also to give them some information so that they can decide if that's a game they want to pull the trigger on and spend those bu big bucks. I can recall when I was first getting into the game, gaming uh, industry, buying games and so forth, they were so cheap. You know, you could get a game easily for like eight bucks, 10 bucks, 12 bucks. Now, they weren't necessarily as nice as uh, what we have, you know, graphics and counters and so forth, but, uh, you know, there still were some good games. A lot of Av Avalon Hill and so forth. So, Anyways, I'm going to stop here. Uh, I just can go on and on and on about talking about nothing really. So, this is just a fast, uh, just a beautiful looking game. The maps. Okay. Uh, Mark Van Marshall has done a phenomenal job in creating this snowy landscape and uh, you know almost like a, a 3D effect with the, the little knolls I call them hilltops okay and the lowlands okay the lower levels uh, 
course you've got to it's just uh, creates to me creates a, a, a the uh, appearance of uh, little hill hills and and the plateaus I guess I call them little knolls but little hills so and the trees of course you know they look uh, barrenless you know because it's winter time and of course the counter is very functional and uh, I like the way that uh, you have the uh, NATO symbols to me it's just easy to distinguish what's what so come on back and uh, I'll see you in the next video